All right, and this is the Sony UX570 and is the successor to the 560 that I reviewed a few months back. But is this one much of an improvement? Let's find out. So once again, I was amazed at how small this thing is. It is tiny, look at that. Weighing only 48 grams. It is both small enough and light enough to carry in your pocket everywhere you go, anywhere, all the time. And you'll hardly even notice it. The form factor is great and it can be easily controlled with just the one hand. And with most of the buttons being on the front of the device, it feels very natural to use, just like using your smartphone. But I will say that some of the buttons are small, so those of you with larger hands may find it a bit frustrating. The screen is bright and easy to read from all angles. The software is easy to navigate and the device itself is intuitive to use. You can literally be recording within one minute, turning it on for the first time, just after setting up the date and time, and then you're good to go. This device, just like its predecessor, has a built-in USB plug that can be popped out with a slider so it can be plugged directly into your PC or laptop. I love this feature, as it saves carrying around any kind of USB leads. Also, while it's plugged in, it will self-charge automatically. Awesome. Awesome. All right, getting into the settings, there are a lot of ways you can configure this device. It gives you four options for sensitivity, which are high, medium, and low. And there's also an auto option here if you're recording on the fly and you need the camera to automatically adjust to the situation. And it seems to do it pretty well. And this setting also works on external mics as well. You also get the option to choose if you want the mic to pick up a wide area or just a focused area. This setting is for the built-in mic only though. Focused obviously being for voice work, whereas the wide is more for ambience or meeting environments or lectures and so forth. There is also an audio in option that you can use to record external sources like a tape player. There's even a sync record option there, which means if you're recording a whole album from a tape, for example, it'll automatically cut the songs into tracks. And the way it works is that if there's more than two seconds of blank space between each track, it'll automatically stop and then start recording again. So you'll have every track cut up for you into separate tracks. That is a time saver. All right then, stats for nerds. So the audio quality settings on this device are LPCM, 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bit, MP3 at 192 kilobytes per second, MP3 at 128 kilobytes per second, and MP3 at 48 kilobytes per second in mono. Now, the built-in memory gives you a full five hours and 30 minutes of record time, and that's LPCM quality, which is the highest. And if you were to chuck a 64 gig SD card inside, you would get over 100 hours of LPCM quality recording. If using MP3, 192 kilobytes, which is the top MP3 quality setting, the internal memory will give you a whopping 40 hours of record time and a 64 gig SD card will give you a mind-blowing 738 hours record time. And what's more, there is a cross-memory function in the device so you can start recording in the inbuilt memory and when that gets full, it'll automatically switch to start recording on the SD card without you having to do anything. Wowzers! Now if you're using this to record meetings, as long and boring as some meetings are, they never usually go over 700 hours, so you should be good with this recorder. Plus there is a dedicated meeting mode on this device for ease of use. Other dedicated modes include lecture, voice notes, interview, and it's got settings for different type of live music events as well. All right, so let's do a quick voice test. Press record. And I am now recording, testing, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. How is this sounding? It is on focused right now, so shouldn't hear too much ambience in the background. Should be, should be mainly just my voice. And I will be playing this audio over the video as well. So the audio you're hearing now in the camera is that of this recording, if that makes any sense. So how does it sound? Does it sound good? I don't know yet. But I will find out. In the edit, there's a spider on my camera. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my god. Hello. This recorder also has a voice activated mode. This is useful for recording yourself sleeping overnight to see if you talk in your sleep or snore. I tried this and found out that I snored 934 times in one single night. I wonder I'm single. All right, so that's a rundown of the features of the device. What if you wanted to use this though for voiceover work, like for YouTube videos, etc.? And what if you wanted to use this connected to your camera? Well, you can do that. As long as your camera has a mic input, you can wire the headphone out jack of the device straight into your mic input on the camera and then adjust the audio levels a little bit. I found between five and 10 on the device is loud enough. Of course, you would have to find a way to secure it to the top of your camera, possibly by Velcro or glue it on a cold shoe. If you are using it this way though, the only way to get the audio to go straight through the device and feed straight into the camera is to press record on the device, press record again, which will pause it, but it will still let the audio feed go straight through. But of course, this machine is not designed to be broadcast quality anyway. It is designed as a dictaphone and it does that very well. Right, well, I've done enough jibber jabbing. Let's get on with the sound tests. All right then, so the settings I've chosen to do these sound tests are medium sensitivity. I'm gonna press record now because I forgot. Um, so now I'm doing a test, it's recording, and it's medium sensitivity, and it's on a wide uh, pickup range, so it should be picking up a bit of everything. There's not really anything happening around me, but there are cars going past outside. I live on a busy main road, so you can possibly hear some of the traffic. It's a busy time of day, apparently. So, um, so now I'll switch, I'll stop recording now, and I'm going to switch this to a focused mode so press record again so now i'm on focused so now you should hear my voice okay but um not so much the background the background should have gone down a bit of a, a level or two so so if you wanted to do voiceover work for example or you do voiceover for your youtube videos or whatnot then this is probably the setting you're going to want to use is the focused mode so when it's on focus you want to point it directly at your mouth or whatever it is you're recording so it doesn't pick up so much of the side audio or the ambience so it's more of a focused uh, pickup so anyway I'm just rabbiting on and on rabbiting on and on so you can hear the quality of the mic itself and I'm gonna be putting this over the video as I've said and I'm not gonna be processing it this is literally just gonna be coming straight out of the device so what you hear now is straight from the SD card without any noise reduction or uh, level adjusts literally just going to plunk it into the edit and play it as it is so hopefully it's, I mean it's peaking well you can, I don't know if you can see that um, when I'm talking it's peaking right up so it, it doesn't seem to be too loud that's why I didn't put it on the loudest so I think the medium is probably the happy medium of where you're going to want to use it but again it depends on what you're actually recording and when so you'll have to play around with all that at, you know on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what you're recording anyway i've been rambling on too long so this should have got, given you a good idea anyway so let's get back to it some more features include a noise cut and a low cut setting you can only have one or the other at any given time though and to be honest i didn't find it to be all that great anyway you get much better results downloading the free program called audacity and using the noise reduction filter built into that software it's quick and easy and free all right this is with the noise cut switched on and there's a fan in the background i don't know if you can hear that but anyway this is a test of the noise cut this is a test oh, with the, the low cut and again there's a fan in the background so can it eliminate that fan noise i don't know we'll see also i should do some p's and q not, not q's p's p p p and b's p p p p p p p this is a test with uh, the noise cut off and there's, you know, there's no the high, the low cut is off as well. It's the same setting. They're both off, and the fan is still going in the background. Is there any noticeable difference? I don't know. I will see you later on when I listen to this back. 
All right then, so we've come to the end of this one. It's a good quality recorder if you're in the market for one. Very small, very handy. There's a link in the description below if you want to check it out on Amazon in the US or the UK. And if you found this review at all helpful and you want to thank me in any way, subscribing is always welcome. Likes and comments help. Using the links below goes a long way. And is that another spider? Look more, a spider. So if you found this review at all helpful and you really want to thank me, subscribing is always welcome. Likes and comments always help too. But the biggest help would be using the said links in the description below to make your purchase. That would be awesome as it means Amazon will pay me a commission at no cost to yourself. Plus it lets me know that I've actually helped somebody in deciding to actually purchase something for a change. There's a fly, there's a fly right, there's a... Alright, there's, there's wasps and stuff around, so I'm going to get out of here. Bye. See ya.